Welcome back to the Contaminated Dungeon. This is the Fade the Public Podcast. Myself, Animal, Snacks. Today we're getting into some dynasty running backs. 2019 fantasy football dynasty running back. Gotta hit that keyword. Rankings. It's not really rankings, but I'm gonna say it because it helps. Because it helps. <laughs> And they also like when you guys hit the thumbs up button, so do that down below. We have a major announcement to start the show off with before we get into the actual fantasy football content and the big facts for you. And I know a lot of you guys have been reaching out to us, and we, and we kind of teased it a while back. We are going to start a Dynasty Fantasy Football League, a Fade the Public Dynasty Fantasy Football League. Myself, Animal, Snacks, starting a league this year. And we're going to be in it forever. For the long run, baby. Till you're dead. Till you're dead. Scott is grandfathered in. He's the GOAT. Four spots already taken. There are eight spots that are going to belong to subscribers. The public. To the public. Can't believe we're opening up eight spots to the public, but we are doing it. Here's how it's going to work. So, before I get into how you enter, this is going to be a raffle system. It's going to be at random, these eight spots, in, in a certain way. We're about a month out from the NFL draft, right? That's in Nashville. Myself, Animal, and Snacks will be attending the NFL draft. We are physically driving our asses down there to go. We're staying for three, three nights, two nights? Two nights. I don't know. Yeah, thank God. Okay. Whatever. We might leave after a night. Yeah. I, there's a strong possibility I get kicked out. There's a strong chance I get, I get kicked out after pick six, so. I would say it's a pick on me after you go last for more than <laughs> so, What's the Vegas odds? Draft. Now, we are not getting paid to go down to the NFL draft. We're doing that for, you, for, your, for your sake. So we opened up a GoFundMe page, right? It's GoFundMe.com slash Big Dogs Draft. And that's going to supply us with travel. We're, we're driving down there. Um, shelter, food, margaritas, most importantly. That's security guards to let us <laughs> videotape with some of the players. Things like that. Exactly. We need, some, we need some, some greasy spokes here. Now, how we're going to do this Dynasty League is this. There are going to be six spots for people who donate to the GoFundMe page. There are going to be two completely free spots open. For the GoFundMe page, it's GoFundMe.com slash Big Dogs Draft. One dollar gets you one entry. Okay? Five dollars gets you five entries, ten dollars, ten, and so on and so forth. Twenty-five dollars will get you ten extra entries on top of that. So, that, that's basically the gist of it. It's going to be at random after that. We're going to go into it after the NFL draft. We're going to look at every, everyone's donations, everyone that put in, and then we're going to do a completely at random raffle that way. So, head over to GoFundMe.com slash Big Dogs Draft if you want to participate in this Dynasty League. This is a startup league. You will be playing with us forever. We're also going to have two free spots. So, if, if you're broke, if you don't want to pay money, you're obviously going to have a lot less chance to get in this way, but you could do it. We're going to have a link down below. It's going to be the first link in the description. I'll also pin it to the top of the comments. You're just going to go to this Google form that I set up. You're going to fill out a few questions, simple information, submit your stuff through there. Uh, one submission per person for the free open spots. If you submit more than one, you're out. You're automatically fucking out. <laughs> That's the most emotion I've ever seen you show on this end. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm ready for the show. All right. So... Uh, that's it. So a dollar will get you one entry. These will be completely at random. You can also enter for free through the Google form that will be linked down in the description. So Big Dogs Draft, GoFundMe.com slash Big Dogs Draft description. We're going to link it literally everywhere. All right, so what we're going to do is... Break down a few running backs that are very closely regarded right now. If you're looking at rankings or ADP, we're going to look at it from a dynasty standpoint, but obviously most of the points that we make are going to be relevant to season long as well. And there are a lot of good discussions that are going to go on this summer. We're going to talk about Chris Carson and Marlon Mack. We're going to talk about Aaron Jones, Karen Johnson, David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell. So we've got six heavy hitters, guys that are likely to be off the board in redraft leagues within the first three to four rounds, if not way earlier than that. So why don't we start it off with Chris Carson of the Seattle Seahawks and Marlon Mack of the Indianapolis Colts. I want to hear your guys' point of view on this one first. Someone take someone take the goddamn mic. Well, I'll first off saying, sorry, Animal, if you were about to speak. I, I, if you both know how big of a fan I am of Chris Carson. Yep. Big fan. Um, I mean, he literally, he had, you know, 250 carries last year. 
1,100 yards, nine touchdowns. Not much of a receiving threat. We know that. He's signed through next year. He's on his rookie deal. It's not, you know, big concern. I love that he's in a run-first system. That is clearly a run-first system. They lost Mike Davis. You know, he went to greener pastures. So that probably opens up a little bit more carries for him, possibly. However, my one big concern about Carson is this Rashad Penny character. You know? First of all, he sounds like a character in a... He sounds like a character in a Disney movie or something. Rashad Penny? He's a first-round pick. I don't know if Disney would have him. Well, maybe... maybe, maybe all right, well, maybe not Disney, but maybe HBO, like, True Detective or something. But... I just watched season three, that's all. Right. Was it good? Yeah, better than season two. Better than season two. Well, everything was better than season two. I stopped watching after, like, 40 minutes. Is it Rachel McAdams and fucking Billingsley in there? Yeah, and Vince Vaughn. It was terrible. I love, love Rachel McAdams. Like, holy shit. Like, love her. It was terrible. No, it was terrible. It was terrible. No, I mean, I, I, I just like, I, we're still early. We're not even in spring yet. I guess technically we're in spring, but we're not in OTAs. We're not in camp yet. So I don't know what Penny is going to do, but he was a first round running back. You're not going to just like, he's going to get the opportunity. Right. And Chris Carson showed his production and right, you're right. Penny was injured. So it's still a little bit of a mystery to me. What Carson's role, if he's going to be the bell cow, I don't think he's going to be, obviously. My, my biggest thing is, even if he is the number one running back in Seattle, what is the number one running back in Seattle? How many, how many carries are you going to get? Like, there, it's still he got 247 last year. I mean, it's not, it's not 400 like you would want, but it wasn't 100. But I think that's also part of the guy's still going to get his vibe. He's still going to get his touch. He scored nine touchdowns. He eclipsed 1,200 yards overall. Yeah, well, Rashad Penny is my biggest concern there. I, I would make the point that, like, I... I'm going to touch on Mac because for me, this isn't really close. I think it's, it's Mac for, by a mile for me. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm sorry. Like, if you're going to who do you want, I, I take Mac. Carson versus Rashad Penny. I, I'm going to take Rashad Penny. So would I. Three or four rounds later. Yep. It's going to be much better. And, and the thing that concerns me about Chris Carson is Rashad Penny, but it's, it's the pass catching there. Yeah. Today, He's got nothing. In today's day and age, 20 receptions last year. 20 yeah. receptions, right? In today's day and age, you can't produce as a fantasy back in it, oh, consistently, you know, with just being a round guy. Right. You could have the one big year, maybe two, if if you have really lucky. But you're you're. Is it consistent? You're exactly. Yeah, you're, you're, you're an outlier. Right. It, it doesn't happen. Like deep research, uh, did, uh, like a deep study into this. If you want to go watch my um, running back sleepers video from last week, where I went in on like guys who have caught twenty or fewer passes and finished as an RB twenty or better, the following year their their fantasy points on average were cut in half. Yeah. It was like one sixty five down to eighty the next year because. It, it, and none of them over the last five years have, have gone up in fantasy points. Because yeah. Because it's just, you know, you need someone that can catch passes there. We talked about Marlon Mack, though. The other oh. thing to really consider with Dynasty, and a lot of new Dynasty players don't think about it because you just say Chris Carson, young, Marlon Mack, young. Chris Carson turned uh, turns 25 in December. Marlon Mack just turned 20. He's got those fresh fucking legs, man. So the apex of, like, a, a running back, you know, when they break out in um, – in the NFL, like, you have that 23 to 27 age range, you know what I mean? So to get a running back, even if they are in the same year, but two years younger, you're getting, like, an extra one or two years of high-level production. Yeah. And think about the situation that Max in, right? Like, he's got luck finally healthy. That offensive line is young. Elite. It's elite. That's an elite offense. I, I, wrote, I wrote my notes. That's an elite offensive line. So you're getting Mac with an elite offensive line during his prime years. How many times do you have, like, those perfect storms kind of hitting together? And, like, I, I was looking at numbers, and I'm just like, when it, Mac has done nothing but be awesome his whole life. He's been productive. Every time he's been on the field. Game ever shattered his school record, 275 rushing yards. Yep. The next year, 1,500 yards from scrimmage, then 1,400 yards from scrimmage. He gets right to the Colts. That's a bad rookie year, but that's because Andrew Luck doesn't play. But the whole, that whole season for the Colts was, exactly. was trash. You throw that right out of the fucking, you can throw that right out the window, you know what I mean? And then last year, Mac has his breakout year, and he, he played yeah. well, has a huge stat line in, right. like, 65% of his games. I, I, I'm, dude, I'm all in on Mac. Um, now Hines has no worry on your like. He, he he's a bit. He he's their receiving back. He it's 68 68 receptions. Yeah. Mac and Mac and Carson both averaged 1.4 receptions a game. Right. That's not good. The thing about Carson though is he was never a pass catcher. Never. Unless he didn't catch balls. Mac Mac has done it. 80th percentile college target share. Yeah. He was there, which is like, that's weird, right? So there is a concern just because you don't know if he's going to get the passing work. Yeah. But um, I, I, I see Nani Mines as the, the pass catcher there. Yeah. Well, he is. He's, he's undoubtedly that. But but I also think those numbers are skewed because Mack missed a lot of time. 
He did. Things that he, they, they played catch up and he was getting like 10, 10 receptions. In the there was also games, they, there were a few games they were up and they were just running the football. So it's not like they're, they're throwing third down, just I dunking mean, it off. I compared the two between Carson and Mack, how many of them, how many 20 carry or 20 touch games they each had? Marlon Mack only had four games with 20 touches or more the whole season. Four games, 20 touches or more. Carson had seven. But so, I, I bet you, I bet you most. Good stat. Good stat. Oh, 100%. 100%. Marlon Mack went for 100 plus yards in like six. Every time he, dude, every time he turned on red zone, he was, he was just, he was killing it. No. Next year, Marlon Mack's going to crush Carson. 14.1 points per game. They're close. With Mack and Carson was 14. Right. It, it, it pains me because I, I legitimately love Chris Carson. I think we were, in, when we first started this thing, it was like week 12 of our fantasy football season. I'm like, dude, I want to get Chris Carson in my lineup. I love him. I love. I just don't. And I'm not saying I had the greatest team of all time, but you guys know I, I had a pretty deep team. I had some options, and I was just like, "Let me get him in. Let me get him in." I love the guy, but there's no way in hell I take I take him over Mac. I that Rashad Penny it scares the hell out of me. Mac is Mac's that good. Dude, Mac is that good. This Colts team is going to be like competing with Super Bowl. hundred percent. There's a reason. There's a game script that we're going to have every, almost every game. The Colts could easily went out and signed Le'Veon Bell, and they would have thought that put him over the top. They were that confident that Marlon Mack is that good of a running back over in that under, system. Okay, Mack, Mack, I think we can agree on this. Mack's the only one getting goal line touches next year, right? 225 pounds. And, uh, yeah, does, yeah, he's the only one. He's the only one. 12? This year, what, he played 10 games, and now this Yeah, you, you got to go over. You got to go over. So, if you're going to go over in 12 rushing touchdowns, how do you, where are you taking him? How is he not a first? He's early. He, he's, he's going he, in like that's ridiculous. Please do not do that. That's bad. I don't think people are realizing just how high Max upside is. No, the Mac, I, I wrote it all. Max, out of the list that we have that we're going to talk about, Mac was my favorite one. And it's hard to put peg him under twelve touchdowns next year, just because the amount of scoring. How can you not? So, uh, Matt, I think I think Matt belongs more so in these these two's conversation, and we're going to move on to Aaron Jones and Karen Johnson. Now, this is this one hits home here because in the Etown Get Down next year, I. Later, and I'm gonna have to choose between keeping one of them. Spoiler, are you gonna tell us who? I mean, I don't know this early on. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I, I can tell you where my head's at right now. Um, Jones <laughs> is a third year player, he's 24, he'll be 25 in December. KJ, second year, he's literally 21 right now, he's not 22. In he's five years young. Oh, shit, he's uh, so Jones young. Jones finished last year as RB 16 points per game, carry on RB 17 points per game. Now, I, you and me like KJ, you like Aaron Jones. I do. When, go, go, go. No, no. I honestly, it's really, it's more of a personal vendetta, honestly. But it's just that Patricia team. I, I, I don't know. It's the Detroit Lions as a franchise. They, they never commit to one guy. How am I supposed to believe that they're gonna give the reins to carry on when they haven't given the reins to anybody in the past? I thought the world of Amir Abdullah when he came out of college. Nothing. I granted, it is a completely different regime. I know that. I'm also a big Aaron Jones fan. I know he got hurt, but when he was on the field, he was productive as hell. We clearly know he's better than Jamal Williams. He's better than any back on that team. The field is wide open. It's a new system with a new offensive coordinator. But Matt, he's, never, he's never had more than 133 carries in a season. You're absolutely right. 5'9", 205 pounds. Maybe, maybe not. I Right now, I'm saying right now, I'm going to take my chances with him over carry on. I'm not, I'm not sitting on, on top of Grand Canyon saying... Aaron Jones ever carry on Johnson? No, that's not what I'm saying. Here's what I'm thinking: like when we went into last year, right? And I think I've said this on the podcast before. Like people were excited about this Detroit offense, not because of Patricia, but they were building their team the right way. A lot of things broke wrong. For once, but they were, yeah. yeah, they were they were stacking up their offense. Right. Line, and, you know they're getting carry on Johnson involved. Legarrette Blunt. Okay, how many how many carries do you think Legarrette Blunt had inside the ten yard line? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> He had 17 carries inside the 10. He had 11 goal line carries last year. Those Christ. are all carries. Yeah. Those are all no, that's true. It's a good point. Karen that's a good point. Was, uh, Karen Johnson was catching the ball like hell. He had three three games of five or more catches, and he only played in 10 games last year. He only played off 50. No, he's a back. He's a back out of the backfield you could trust. Theo he's going to catch balls. Right, and Theo Riddick is still there, but that proves to me. <laughs> How's he not dead? Carry on. Dude, he's got a lifetime contract. <laughs> it's unbelievable. He's got new pitchers. He, him and Marvin Lewis, it's unbelievable. Pisses me off as, as someone who's probably going to own Karen Johnson. He's on the field 38 of the time. Versus and, and, but that kind of alludes to my point. Like, they, I just, for some reason. I get what you're 
whatever's in Detroit's water. It's like you're a really good running back. Offensive coordinator, new OC, Daryl Bevel. He was the offensive coordinator in Minnesota for a long time, and then Seattle. Yeah. He had an eight-year stretch. He's good. He's good. An eight-year stretch in which his RB one was the RB six in fantasy football or better. Eight straight years, basically a top five fantasy running back. Yeah. They're gonna feed. Who were those running backs? Oh. It was AP and Marshawn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, it, but your philosophy but, doesn't change. Say, but if he thinks Karen Johnson is fits the mold, then that means we've already seen him feed. And carry on is not a carry on is very good. You do it all. I get what you're saying. I'm totally scared, but I would say in this situation, I would take carry on over Aaron Jones because I look at Aaron Jones and I'm like, I don't think he could be a feature back. I want to. I love his talent as much as the next guy. That see that I'm banking off talent, system, quarterback, spread out. You know, that's what I'm going on. But, but the last report I saw from the uh, from about Adam Matt Lafleur said a committee approach is the most effective mm -hmm. thing when it comes to Jamal Williams. Yeah, saw that too. Unless yeah. one of them gets hurt again, which is probably going to happen this year, one way or another. I'm just like I'm like so down on Jamal Williams. I think I literally think he's a bum. I'm sorry. I just I, he's a bum. I understand that. I just think at some point in time there's gonna be a coach. Hopefully it's Matt Lafleur that realizes Aaron Jones is 20 times better talent wise than Jamal Williams. Well, that right, that, and that's the biggest problem. If you told me that Carrion was was to get the featured load, but he only plays in 12 games, or Aaron Jones was to get 15. 15 to 18 touches for a full season. Like, I, I would honestly probably expect Aaron Jones to produce more overall in the season. Yeah. Aaron Jones played 12 games last year, and he had 15 touches six times. 15 touches or more. Uh. I just, I think that also goes to show, I know it's a new system, like Matt Floor's coming in and stuff, but like, it's been two years now, and this Green Bay front office, I feel like, just doesn't want to commit to Jones as the guy, no matter who is the, the coach. It's a big concern, because you would have thought that would have been like the full thing last year, but it's just not... Yeah, that's. But whatever, that also might play that strength though, because he's he's a he's a good pass catcher. He is. He can do it all. Yeah, <laughs> both of them can do it all. Not yet. Yeah. We'll see how. We'll see how the offense works. Last year. So you're you're taking Jones right now. I'm but, taking Jones. But in dynasty, in, in a dynasty league, KJ's 21. Aaron Jones is going to be 25 in December. Yeah. Still Jones. That's true. Thing just because he's a Packer. Well, no, it's just. Better team. I just like his talent better. Uh, if he's on the field, sixteen games, which uh, again. The only thing I really like better about Aaron Jones is his quarterback situation. That's it. It's it's a very nice situation. Everything else, I'm I'm, I'm on carry on. No, I'm gonna take Aaron Jones. I, I'm sorry. I I, just, I don't tr I do not trust the city of Detroit. I don't trust that team. I don't trust anything. I don't trust anything. Listen, look, I, I will be, I will gladly be proven wrong because I'm keeping carry on in one of my leagues. So if I'm wrong, good for me. Yeah, for right now, carry on is going to be my pick for the keeper league. But obviously, we have five more fucking months for me to decide that. We have a few minutes before the next. Uh, one. And then we got the last comparison. Who do we pick between Justin and Le'Veon Bell? Ugh. When do you guys uh, start this off? I actually really like Le'Veon Bell here. And for, I guess probably the most obvious reason is the quarterback situation in Arizona. I Listen, we can all assume it's going to be Kyler Murray, but we don't know yet. Just, you know, we, until we see what happens in the draft, we don't know what the QB situation is going to be there. And that has a lot to do with this. They're so, both 27, right? Yeah, they're both 27. They're, they're both, uh, well, Le'Veon's got four years on his contract. David Johnson has three. But Le'Veon also had pretty much, pretty much a two-year opt-out. They can... You know, get his guaranteed money within the two years, and they can cut him if he is not performing. So basically, it's a four-year could be a two-year, but um, the, the the problem with this is Le'Veon had that whole year off. So going back to like the stats, you have to go back to the 2017. But just for the you think points that's per game, him I, mean, I think that works in his favor because DJ well, has the workload that Bell does. Another team talking about like, we're with Sam Darnold now. I'm talking about workload. I'm not. I'm just talking about like volume, sheer volume, workload, volume? everything. Yeah. I mean, in terms of like holding up as an older back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. He's 27. Like he's he's not young. No. No. I I know. I know. I'm just saying. That's why like DJ feels feels. Like oh DJ. Oh. DJ came out really really old. He's he's like yeah. he's like. Oh shit! You're right. Oh wow! Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. He's 26, David Johnson. Well, either way. 
Okay, so <laughs> yep. <laughs> Twenty-seven year olds, yeah. I mean, the biggest, the biggest thing is like they're both gonna have dumb quarterbacks. The only thing is, I've seen Sam Darnold for for a whole year already, and I like what I've seen. He's he's had a lot. The biggest problem with Sam Darnold though is he was the worst in the league at short passes, which makes me a little bit nervous. What do you mean by worst in the league? Like his, for his by what, completion, completion percentage. Well, are you just making this up? No, no, no. I'm not making it up. I read it in, in a book. No, <laughs> online. I read it today. You need to have these facts. You can't come at me. So you're saying Sam Donald has the lowest completion percentage in midfield to short range. Okay. There you go. I'm trying to help. There you go. He was a rookie. He was a rookie. Right. Which makes me a little bit nervous because part of Le'Veon's game is dump off passes. Right. And to Nick's point, I think you have hammered it home in your videos and everything. Adam Gase does not feature running backs in his... I think you will. In the though. system. That's not, is that a concern of yours, really? For the, for Absolutely. I mean, really? think about it. No. After all the money this game, I can't imagine them not no. being the ridiculous. Well, I get, you know what? You're right. At this point, they have really. I, Robbie Anderson, Qu Quincy Newman, yeah, they're, they're serviceable. I like the offense that they're building in New York better than Arizona because Arizona still is a. Right. I, I, yeah, they do. But I also kind of like the idea of that Cliff Kingsbury offense. Me too. And it, like, if Kyle Murray's there, that shit's open. Like, That's open. Is gonna be like a good NFL He's rogue. It's rogue. Throw it at 65%. Yeah, exactly. So that's going to... I don't know. Like, this is something I haven't heard at all. And I feel like it should have been made more of a point after last season. When I watched David Johnson, he didn't even really look that good. No, he didn't. Uh, uh, two years ago? Holy shit, he looked great. Yeah. He was the best running back in football. Do you think last year was... Like, uh, I think, wasn't that three years ago at this point? Oh, yeah, right, yeah. Like three year, three years like, ago. Everyone was, like, waiting for David Johnson to explode. You know, have a couple big games, but even in those games to me, even when the line opened up holes, like, he didn't look like David Johnson at points. Yeah. Like, the morale was just down from his team being so bad. And it it could have been. This, I'm not going to bust my ass. It could have been, but I don't... I, he did get paid, too. He got a nice contract extension. Like, always slows you down a little bit. There. Always slows you down. It just seemed like it wasn't there for me. I don't know. Um, I, I would go with Le'Veon Bell here. Yeah. I, I, would, I, I was going to say, uh, Animal, I agree with you. For the, the volume, yeah, I, I think I think Bell is is pretty much guaranteed that volume. Either way, I think it's like a two three year spurt, one way or another, with Bell or DJ. So kind of take your pick, I, sort I really of thing. Like the fact that Bell just sat out for the year, to be honest. He's yeah, he's rested. Yeah. My only thing is, it, he's not Adrian Peterson, so he's not coming back, and he's gonna he's not gonna run ramshot through the league. He's not. He's just, just not him. He's gonna need it. He needs it. And I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna be fat. And my biggest concern about him is, you know, if he literally stubs a toe, I think he's going to sit out two games. Really? I don't trust wow. Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, I don't trust him. Kind of yeah. He got his money. How do you trust him? How? L listen, this is all, like, this is all my opinion. Of course. Of course. Yes. Talent-wise, undeniable. It's just something about him. I do think it could. I mean, I don't want to say undeniable. Obviously, he's probably a top three running back in the NFL, like, through our generation. But huh. think about think about the offense that he was in with Pittsburgh. They they've always been a, a top tier offensive line. Well, see that's the thing, and they had a number. They had the best wide receiver on the outside. Yeah. Think of who Bell is as a running back. He doesn't break big runs. No, he's patient and he waits. For the open up and up. He he literally he literally he he takes as much time to find a hole as I do getting out of bed in the morning. Like it's it takes that long. It's it's fact. It's big facts only. It's slow motion. It's actually beautiful to watch. But that offensive line, while it got a little bit better with Azamalolo, whatever his name is, I don't really care. It's really not that much better. It's not. And there's no outside threats like that. The Jets' offense is going to be zeroed in by defenses by Le'Veon Bell. They are going to be in that box. They're going to have a spy on him. I don't know. I take, I take Le'Veon over DJ. However, I wouldn't reach for either of them. Neither, neither would I. Exactly, you can't. My concerns are my concern. Who do you trust more over the next two years? I guess I would trust it. Levy on Bill. I trust Bell more. Yeah. yeah. He's gonna get. He's. Second yeah. In, in second yeah. Rounder. I would say mid, mid late, mid, mid late. Rounder, DJ's probably right there too. I think he's like a preference. He's not far behind. Yeah, I would go. Bell, right? I will say though, it, a lot can change if if Cliff comes in and that offense like really clicks. They they get Murray. They do that run pass option. Like a lot of things. 
There could be a, a big change. Draft a, a lineman within one of their first two or three rounds. Or yeah. Two linemen in the first two or three rounds. Grab one in free agency. Right. You have a whole new line there. Well, if they were smart, if they were if they were smart, they would draft Kyler. They would have the number one pick in the second round and the number six pick in the second round because they would have traded Josh Rosen to the Giants. So you could draft two fucking linemen there. Very true. But what do I know? I'm a doctor. So. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I wanna make. I wanna make the fucking. I. I can't hold. I can't. Yeah, I can't it's, wait. Gonna, it's gonna get cold. Yeah. It's, you wanna do the hurry ghost now? You can always put it in the back, can't you? I don't give a fuck. Oh god, there's like cheese all over my fingers now. All right, you see people. This is how you do it. Last week on our herd of goats, aka our Mount Rushmore, who won? We had our fast food items. Wait, I don't who won? Even, did he have an official? Was that the official poll? I feel like that I was should, the official poll. This fucking poll is bullshit. No, it's not bullshit. I won. It was on the official Fade the Public Twitter account. And I won. We all know I really won. I feel bad for you because you had cancer. So they gave it to you. Jesus Christ. This, <laughs> this is what's going to happen. I'm going to show you what all four of my fast food items combined taste like. You're not going to be able to taste it. You're going to be able You're gonna be able to taste so it. So you, you do the McGangbang. I had a lot of questions about the McGangbang. I can't believe... You know what? A lot of y'all don't know what the McGangbang is, and it shows. There's a problem with y'all. There's like a 100% chance after this I go to McDonald's. <laughs> so you take a McDouble, you rip it in half, you throw a McChicken in there. I got no mayo, only because we're going with a Krispy Kreme also in the middle of it. And I don't want mayo on top of my, or as on my donut. I, gonna I don't want to double it because I already have like six buns on there. Okay. And we all know the best pickles in the world are from Chick-fil-A. Even though McDonald's pickles are fucking are legit too. They're probably number two in the game. I'm just going to throw some pickles on there. And then to top it off because it's dessert. Because the Krispy Kreme wasn't enough. We got... Icing straight from Domino's. Yes, I went to all these places individually today to pick these. He did. I got Chick Fil A fries. He's a good Yo, man. Yo, the icing on the Krispy Kreme is probably about to be the best thing of all time. If you're gonna tell me I didn't win this fucking herd of goats bullshit, no, you didn't. I you won. You didn't win. I'm about to win. Snacks. I won. can't believe I came in last place. You really guys were all sick. Well, he got. I put got, normal people food. So did I. Yeah, yours was good. Yours list Thank was you. respectable. Thank I can you. understand it winning. Thank you. I can't understand being beat by his garbage list of I, I, condiments. Max couldn't agree more. You guys are fucking ignorant. This is what you do. Guys eating donuts and hamburgers. The gangbang, Krispy Kreme, Domino's icing. You have to go to Chick Fil A to get the pickles. Y'all ready? Let me turn this thing around. Let me go up. Disgusting. <laughs> you guys want a bite? No. Kinda. I feel. I, <laughs> I feel like a bad. <laughs> Kinda. I feel like a bad friend not letting you have this. Look at it. Oh my god. Holy shit, that looks so good. Yeah, What's the really calorie good. count on that? I Who gives a fuck? I think it's like 1,200 it's calories. Got, oh, no way, it's gonna be more. There's no way that's What's the, McDouble's calories. like what? 400, 500? No. McDouble's, McDouble's 400. McChicken's like three. One of these is 200. That's nine. That's, like 14, probably another that's like 14 million. Take a few off of that, maybe. Well, I will take a bite. Do it. It's really kind of hard to do. Really? It's yeah. big. I can take a bite? It's a big girl. Yeah, take a bite. What are you asking me for? Yeah, do it. Oh, Sorry. Uh, by the way, uh, I had multiple people that sent me pictures through DM or Twitter or whatever. I'm sorry. Like, I've really fucked that up for you. Here, there's a... Uh... I'm not sure if I want to take a bite of this. Why not? That sent me pictures of, uh, of getting icing with their Domino's pizza, and they all said it was fire. Tell me it's not good. Tell me how fucking good it is. <laughs> Tell me how right <laughs> I am. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yes, that's what I thought. Sure, it's, it's really fucking good. <laughs> Matt, I'm telling you. Donut and burgers. Of course it's good. Mm. No. No, we were hating on it. We I'm were saying on it. it's a gross don't combo. Don't think it should have beaten No, it shouldn't have. That is a really, really good combo. Yeah, it is. I'm really happy I got all this. I got it all in, too. <laughs> like, I didn't take the biggest bite, like King Kong Bundy, but that is a goddamn good, <clears throat> good sandwich. Yeah. So go get yourself a McGangbang. Go get yourself some Domino's pizza. Throw some Cine Sticks icing on it. Have yourself a day. Go get some. Oh, I do taste that icing. Some Krispy Kremes. Mm. I'm feeling like a real fat piece of shit today. Let's talk. Damn. Football. Football. Let's do, let's do what we do worst. 
By the way, I want to talk about two Roberts out of the New England Hold area. on. I got a new goal, by the way. A new goal? A new goal. You saying goal? I've given up on Adam Thielen coming on the podcast. You tried so hard. I have a new yeah. target. Oh. You're not going to get Scott Hansen. How do you know? Because I know. You're not going to get Scott Hansen. If you can't get Adam Thielen, Scott Hansen is not going to take time from his busy day to come Scott here. Hansen's more uh, more famous than Adam Thielen. I I'm sure try. he's busier. What yeah. The, uh, Graham Barfield, who came on my channel this week, worked mm-hmm. with Scott Hansen. Oh, yeah? In the fucking NFL office. Yeah. You got the hookup? All right, never mind. We're in. I don't think it's going to happen. But Suck my red dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's talk some Roberts. Holy shit, that's good. I'm sorry. I'm let's talk still some Bobby. Like... You want some more? No. Okay. That's fine. Robert Kraft, good. Robert Gronkowski. A lot to cover here. A lot to unfold. Let's talk... Uh, Let's get the serious shit out of Who's the way the first. Who's the bigger sexual Robert? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely might have, crafty. Might have to wait for the tape. Definitely crafty. Yeah. By the way, uh, we, we preface by saying this literally has no bearing. The Patriots will be in the Super Bowl next year, so it doesn't matter. No effect whatsoever. <laughs> so Robert Kraft apparently is going to have a video surface soon. The owner of the legendary NFL New England Patriots is facing charges of soliciting prostitution. Police say they have video evidence of Robert Kraft inside the day spa. What the content of it is? Have we heard any anything about what it's going to be? I heard there was two sex acts. That's all. And there was handing of a $100 bill. But they didn't specify on if it was like a handy, a blowy. I feel like they're not just going to release a, a tape of Robert oh, Kraft doing a blow job. There's no way they can. Isn't that no. illegal? Why not? No, way. no, it's not. What If it's... It's TMZ is. will get it. TMZ, I feel like their entire marketing budget is just giving people money for videos. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, we're just going to give... This, this quarter's marketing budget is $25 million. This one's going to the Kardashians. This one's going to the Patriots. Fucking out of control how that business operates. I hate TMZ. They're the worst. They're absolutely... By far the worst. I'll tell you what. This fucking thing is sending me like off the tracks right now. I'm not paying attention whatsoever <laughs> anymore. Robert Kraft, are we gonna watch it? Absolutely, we're gonna fucking watch this thing. Of course, when it comes out. We're gonna do a live reaction video. If you if don't does. watch it, you're a loser. Fucking <laughs> yeah. Sorry, like are you okay, you're not allowed me? to watch us. Anymore. If you if you're not a football fan, if you don't watch this, unless that's your grandfather. I don't I don't know how many grandkids Robert Kraft has. Or Probably even not his a kids. Lot. Or maybe he has a lot of them. He's a lot of like well, his kids his son's like his second prostitutes. secondhand man. So really. Yeah. I didn't know that. All right, let's talk Rob Gronkowski, though. He retires. Yeah. Oh, oh, shout out, man. He's... Goat tight end. The greatest tight end I've ever seen in my life. First ballot? What? Of course. Yeah. Well, it's been it's been a big uh, topic. since From he's who? Just I, all over the Twitter like, and uh, Sounds like NFL people Network. who just want clickbait. Yeah. I saw, like, Rod Woodson said, like, he's not a first round... He's not a first... He's not a first ballot, and he's not... Um, he said he's not even a Hall of Famer, I think. Okay, well, I would love to hear Rob Woodson's guy. thoughts yeah, on why that, that isn't the case. I book he's market. literally... Oh, Jesus. You all right? Yeah, I hear you, dog. <laughs> you guys okay? <laughs> he's literally no, the greatest... He's literally the greatest tight end I've ever seen in my life. Okay, so Gronk... And we, so, we've seen some good tight ends. Tony Gonzalez, Antonio Gates. Like, yeah. They're only, I feel like they're only getting better because they're getting more athletic, too. Right. And so Gronk, Gronk retires. Now... They made a hard push at Jared Cook. Supposedly, yeah, when they were hurt, pushing yeah. for Jared Cook, they didn't know of Gronk's retirement. It came as a surprise to them. They so, were they would have made that they were saying they would have made a bigger offer if they, they knew. knew. Yeah, yeah. So Jared Cook's going to the Saints, which we should talk about after Good this. Good signing. Um, yeah, great signing coming off that year. Now this is a strong class for tight ends. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it's like an, an amazing class, but they have a couple guys at the top, both Iowa Hawkeyes in Noah Fant and TJ Hawkinson. Hawkinson. Hawkinson seems like the Patriots guy to me. Yeah, he's an all around prospect. Great receiver, great, great blocker. blocker. Yep, he seems like the perfect fit for like a Patriots replacement for Gronk. So, I, I don't know if that's like so obvious that it's too obvious for them to do it, but that wouldn't be the surprise a surprise if they made that move. Um, and there's no there's no tight ends left on the market. Like they waited too long to grab. Even I could have seen them go for like Eifert. You know, just yeah. sign him to yeah, a one year deal just for re- potential touchdown machine. Yeah, yeah, but they missed that. Re-signed Cincinnati the resigned him. Um, so there's nothing out on the market. I can't imagine how they don't go uh, with someone in the draft. We're going to be in Nashville, and it's going to be like, the Patriots have traded up. Yeah, we well, know they, exactly they, who it's going to be. You think they would have nuts. to trade up, right? There's no way they could get him. Where are they at? No, right he's now? not. He's not. He's 32. 32. 32. I didn't know if they had other firsts, though. Because I feel like they nah, yeah, had a couple no, firsts. No. All right. So, 32. Yeah, they're going to have to. I would imagine Hawkinson probably goes top 15 and fans top 25 minimum. So, yeah, so they got to trade yeah, up. You would they're going to have to trade up. They have up, enough yeah. picks. They have a does lot of. Does he go top 15? They have a couple third-round picks. I think Hawkinson will, yeah. I think he'll go top 15 somewhere. I think he's too much of an all-around asset 
for him yeah. not to go that high up. Yeah, he, he's a great receiver, great block. You're, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I, I think he'll go up there. That's a good point. Um, I wasn't really thinking They're talking it. about the Broncos drafting him at 10, so. Okay, then they're dumb. <laughs> okay, Saying so Jared Cook go. goes to the Saints. I feel well, like this is going to get more hype than – but I feel like his his the buzz around him might get a little too high. It's to the point – like, I like the move, but I think before we know it, he's going to be, like, drafted as a top six tight end now. It, which is bad. Yeah. He had a career year on a one-year deal in Oakland. On a team like with 35. no one else catching right. the ball. and he was the only one catching yeah. the ball. But he goes into a great system with a great QB, yep. mm-hmm. a system that loves tight end. Fucking Ben Watson was 49 years old last year, and he was putting up decent fantasy football games. Yeah. Like at, least, Jack, at worst, it, it at least gives, like, fantasy footballers another fucking player to throw in the tight end. Exactly, spot. right. Like, awesome I mean, person. top six is probably where he's going to go here. So, I wouldn't draft him there. I would say no. Neither would I. Yeah, you got Ebron. Uh, I wouldn't say I now with Funches. Now with Funches and uh, Andy, I don't think I'd take Ebron. I don't either. There. Ebron that and and with Njo- and with OBJ in Cleveland, I don't know if I would take. You taking? Uh, I like. I actually like Njoku. Evan year. Ingram over Jared Cook. Yes. Yeah. I would. Mm-hmm. I would. It's yeah. Like one I, of the, I feel like that. they're right there. They're Dude, like right in the I same spot. I was trying to tell you guys such what a shitty tier. Mm-hmm. of players. When Ingram, when OBJ was not in the lineup, Ingram was like. Yeah, but they he's did get Golden stud. Tate, though, too. They got Golden Tate. But Golden Tate's not OBJ. No, he's not. But no. he runs a lot of the same routes. He runs well, the same the routes, but Ingr- Ingram's a scene so still, player. As long as he's, he's right taking the, the targets, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Golden yeah. Tate's very much over the field this way. So, we'll, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Giants are going playoffs, so either way. This is a poker game. I'm shoving my chips to the middle of the table. I'm raising the ante. Anybody wants in, get in. Anybody wants out, get out. Okay. This team is going to the playoff. But what we were saying was, <laughs> sorry, free. You plug. might be the woke free plug season. Woke segwayer. That was a free plug season. <laughs> I wasn't I, a good. I, segue. I got the Giants to go in the playoffs. You're going to say the Giants are going to playoffs, and uh, anyways, <laughs> but you don't. You never follow it up. <laughs> you just fucking hit a wall. That literally ha- that, that literally happens there. once, minimum twice a uh, <laughs> an episode. But okay, yeah. so Robert and Robert. I'm, I'm they really, go out together. It's it's a good it's a good thing. I like that. I mean, Kraft's not going out together. Kraft's not going no, anywhere. No, Kraft's fine. Yeah. Kraft's going to convince Gronk to come back. Somehow. Did you see? There was a video of him walking into the owner meetings, just like high fiving everybody. Like, I don't give a fuck. No. He got a rub and tug. <laughs> he got a fucking rub and I, tug. Listen, I know. I don't see a big deal in it at all. You've been stressed at work before? You but get a rub and tug. Yeah. I've respected myself. Have you ever actually gotten a rub and tug? Yeah. Yeah. I'm Florida. Not one. Florida. Yeah, in Florida. I don't degrade Have you myself. Seen that thing that's I got going a beautiful on Twitter, girlfriend. I don't like need to do Google that. your name plus or your birth date. Oh, I did date, that. Birth date plus Florida plus man. Florida man, and then you put your birth date. What did yours come out as? I'll tell you remember? right now. No, mine, no. mine was like something about like a, a guy dancing naked in a fire. Epic. Is Let's it see. date first and then Florida man? No, you're right. Florida man, and then your birthday, and then everyone go on on Google and type in Florida man, and then your birthday, and it's always something fucking ignorant that pops up. Holy shit. Yeah, mine was Florida man. Uh, naked Florida man stood in a fire and chanted gibberish. <laughs> George had a really good one. He, he tweeted it out. I forget what it was, though. But nothing comes up on mine. They By the way, I just just a birthday. quick statement about Benny uh, Bernstein, our, uh, our mascot. He just got six new toys. Six? <laughs> That's the update. Bernstein is very <laughs> spoiled, okay? <laughs> Literally, like hey, the most fuckers. spoiled dog in the world. The McCream gangbang. Rest in peace, bitches. That shit was really good, by the way. I I, I really wish I didn't like that because I wanted to hate on it so much, right but now. I couldn't. All right. We're falling off hard here. Well, the Robert Robert kind of got us off. Robert, we, Robert. We, we did so well with the Dynasty running backs, and then well, it was let's, like. Uh, let's, let's, let's talk about this chart here. Gronk, Gronk yeah. is retiring. Odds. Odd Shark opened up uh, a bet. We did do we did do the odds where he's gonna go next. Odds, so. the favorite is to fight in the WWE. That was one thing we had. That's mm-hmm. plus one fifty. Commentate on the NFL plus two hundred. Act five hundred. Yes. Host a podcast five hundred. Playing NFL, XFL, AAF, CFL, strip professionally. I I think plus five hundred on Act yeah. is is a gr- are great odds. Easiest great to, value. Best, best value. Well, it, the Hands first down. thing he does. So if is it Act in a is commercial? It, <laughs> now, now uh, I guess so. He's officially retired. What will he do next? Yeah, I guess like they'll be. They're probably looking for like what's his next like. It seems like perf- career path. Yeah, I think I think they're more like, is it going to be a movie? So he's going to be doing yeah. like doing like cameos, like like kind of like LeBron, uh, like um, kind of like. A, are you talking about? I mean, LeBron did like a full that movie. guy. Yeah, yeah, like how he was in that um, movie what was it with uh, Amy Schumer and Bill right. Hader? Yeah, yes. I know what you're talking about. I like the name. Movie. That was actually a very funny movie. And John LeBron Cena was, the, was in that too. LeBron was the worst part of that movie. Oh yeah, 
Well, LeBron's only won three finals. He's lost six. He's never been the greatest <laughs> yeah, of all time. He didn't even get the Lakers to the playoffs this year. No, he's a fucking pussy. I swear to no God. Problem. Anybody wants to talk to me about LeBron, please tweet at me. I swear to God, I'll bury you. But yes, <laughs> I'll bury you. I, I'm actually going to go with the WWE. I was there live in Florida, in Orlando, Florida, when he jumped the rail and he fucking he like went at somebody like mm-hmm. this. He went at Jinder Mahal. He gave him an elbow. And he was so pumped up. So, I mean, I, the value, I guess, isn't there. It's the favorite. But that's where I'm going to go. You worried about his body at all? No, I'm just like it's too banged up. So the WD might be too. The Undertaker's hard for him. 55 years old. He wrestles every year. Yeah, but the Undertaker's already dead. Well, you can't kill what's already dead. Exactly. Max. So he's just he's just out there going going with the flow. Undertaker's a different breed. You're right. The Undertaker's. I, the I, like, I just like the act. Holy shit! It, we should definitely have to go to WWE Superstars. God damn it! Next week. Yeah, definitely. Next week. Yeah, we'll do that. Y'all too done. Let's talk some March Madness. Oh! Madness. We opened up the uh, Big Dogs Tourney Challenge last week. Oh, free. Let's see who's in the lead. Quirty. It better not be Danny or fucking Sexy Pats. I swear to God. No, it's not. It is Quirty. I can't even find it. Quirty? That's just yeah, like, you know, like on the Sounds keyboard. Sounds like so you just fucking did the keyboard yeah, like did that. the keyboard thing. But that's Wonder, their name. that's his birth name? I doubt it. UMBC Dynasty. Oh, Pat's fans in second place, even though he had like 17 fucking entrances. Well, yeah, yeah, we we have to uh, decipher that one. By the yeah, way. That's all right. He fucking loses. Pat's fan, you're done. How many people we get? We got a lot of people in here, huh? We got a ton. Like 100, <laughs> we got people. a ton. What are you fuckers? I mean, they just do anything for free. Y'all are fucking. Y'all we should have charged this shit. We should have charged fucking five dollars. We would have done the for free. <laughs> There's the public. If you haven't fucking entered to be in our dynasty league yet, what are you doing? Go find I, honestly, we have a group me. It's a, it's like a lot of fun. We're gonna have a lot of fun for years to come. So please do it. GoFundMe.com slash. I talk a lot friend. of shit. Yeah, it's gonna. Be so fun. if you can't handle that, don't even start. Yeah, and if you have a family, wife, and kids, just don't join it. Yeah, do yourselves a favor. <laughs> you, you, you're gonna be bombarded with messages. You're just not gonna want to deal with it. So yeah, March Madness. I will say, I'll start off by saying um, that game last night. You you watched the Duke game. Duke game. That's the only the, the, like the last. Ten minutes of that game, I think, is the only basketball I've watched this entire Damn, tournament. man. You're missing out. No, As you, I've gotten older. You're not really missing out because this March Madness has not been that great. No. There's, there's been a few games. There hasn't been a buzzer beater. There hasn't yeah. been, like, that crazy upset yet. I mean, UC Irvine beat Kansas State, but everybody in the world was picking UC I, Irvine. I had that picked, yeah. He, so did I. Like, Wade was out for Kansas State. There hasn't been anything too crazy um, you haven't missed much, but that Duke U- UCF game was off the that charts. Was, that was how crazy. did UCF not get the first roll and then the tip in? How does yeah. that not happen? I don't know. That's tragic. That, did that, you see that, that video? You, the six, the seven foot five, seven nine. Whatever. Yeah, he's Ta- seven nine, <laughs> no, seven six. And Taco fall off the back of the rim and the fall underneath and another jam. Taco underneath. Here you got to attack him. Ball with a slip. Say goodnight, Taco. Taco. Delorey on him. Four Dawkins block. <laughs> I was like, holy fuck. Is he, he like an NBA prospect? Him. No. No? He'll never get drafted. I was going to say. See, I, he, he may get drafted, but he's he never going to get good. like. If I'm on a team, I'm taking him just to like try and turn him into something. So those guys size. need to just shatter every time. Dude, he's got no, he's got no shot. Yeah. He's no terrible. Shot. He can't even hit a layup. He it's can't very move bad. up and down the court. Yeah. He sits 20 minutes a game. He's in college. Yeah. Dude, I feel so, <laughs> I feel so no, bad. These college kids play every fucking minute. I feel so bad for guys like that that are just like 7'6", and it's like... But you know what? I mean, it's kind of cool. Like, March Madness is probably the second biggest tournament in America outside the Masters. So it's like, you know, he makes a name for himself there. Yeah. Builds Everybody's going to remember Taco Fall no matter what. Yeah. Whether it goes to the NBA or not. They're going to remember like in, him. In real life. Imagine being that tall and just like, you can't, it would suck. You can't would do suck. anything. It would suck. That. Every girl is going to be like, oh, this is amazing. And then they're going to look at you like, no, Did you I, see no, uh, like way too, never yeah. mind, the yeah. picture of him next to uh, Tracy Wolfson? Tracy, well, yeah. Yep. She's like standing <laughs> next to him and she's like right at his waist. Jeez. It's crazy. And Max, as Duke fans, I think we can agree. I'm not a Duke fan. Oh, I'm a Duke fan. But there they're is, not going to. that smooth ass segue. <laughs> I thought it was really good. But I thought it was a Duke fan. Nah. We don't really talk much outside of this podcast. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're not going anywhere. They can't shoot the three, they can't shoot a free throw. Yeah, no, they're, they're not, not going, going I picked, anywhere. I picked North Carolina. I well, that's that's dumb because Kentucky's gonna beat North Carolina. No, I legitimately think Stop, Virginia please, Tech is. You fucking picked Yale. Don't even talk to me. They lost by three. They lost. It was a fourteen seed. You have to have some outliers in there. No, it was a bad one. Okay, LSU to the Sweet Sixteen was easiest. Easiest pick I made. Oh yeah, because they blew a twenty-five point lead. Yeah, it was really fucking good. Are they you that it. stupid? They made it. They, did you watch the game? Because they won. Oh no, it was Tennessee that blew a twenty-five. Yeah, so point shut lead. up. 
You know what you're talking about. Eat your fucking fry. Go home and get your fucking shine box. Listen, you have fries left still? What are you doing? I, I got a few. Eating cold, cold fries. on my sandwich, you fucking Why would I do that? Because you were eating it. It wasn't good. Me. be fucking good, bro. But yeah, either way. Uh, thank, you, thank, thank you guys for joining March Madness. Yeah, let's move on to something else that we can pretty good. Uh, let's do the herd of goats. Let's talk about NFL. Let's jerseys. do it. <clears throat> it's time. our favorite NFL jerseys of all time. That is what our herd of goats is today. We're all picking four of our favorite NFL jerseys oh, of all time. I want to hear some of yours. Drop them down in the comments section below. I can't imagine that you can pick one outside of the 12 that we have. Right? Literally. I don't think there's anything better. No, they all suck. It's Boy. pretty. It's a pretty like there's like Dude, I have a lot. I mean, I could probably think it. 10 easily. Yeah. I love we should have done the best jerseys overall, like of all time. That's what just I was like thinking. Sports all sports. sports. That, that, that would, that would be fire. so hard. So it's hard. It. Just fucking do it. Pause it. No. We're running through it. We could do that another I'm going to start time. off. Well, the Yankees is the number one. The first one on my list is the though. fucking beautiful Falcons jersey that I wore last week. Number all black. One. Dirty birds. Blacked out. We blacked out like Saturday night. It is fucking beautiful. It's crispy. It's simple. It's scary. I'm scared right now just thinking about it. That's number one. That's my, that's my G. That's my goat. That's G-G. my G. We're All right. Well, Krispy since you're going to stay with your We're team. Krispy Kreme number three. Damn, bro. Oh, yeah. Give me one. What the fuck? You said they were all for me. Ooh, nice toss. A oh, really good toss. Should have caught on your finger. Um, yeah, so I am sticking with my team, and I'm going with the Broncos, but I'm going with their throwback away jerseys. The white with the blue numbers mm-hmm. and the orange you outline. biased fuck. The orange outline it just makes it look so crisp. And the blue is like a metallic y, like shiny blue it's in the nice numbers. Jersey. It's so nice. And the Why don't they wear them anymore? Well, so our color rush jerseys have like the same helmet now. I think we're going to eventually go back to that with the D and the horse in the middle. Right. They're awesome. But um, yeah, so that's my G, the, the Way Broncos throwbacks. Well, you're a, you're a Falcons fan, right? I don't even Thought know. You're a Broncos fan? I don't even know yeah. at this point. Well, I'm a Giants fan. So I had Giants uh, a little bit lower on this, but. Sticking with the theme of Fade the Public tonight, I'm going to go with the LT jerseys. That's what I call them. Um, the giant, the classic giant. It says, it says Giants, Giants on the same helmet. NY. Yep. Yep. It's got the, the red stripes. It's got everything. The what? The red stripes on the pants. Most beautiful jersey in the world. And the greatest football player of all time rocked that jersey. So, not mad really, at that. Not can't mad go at wrong. Nope. I like those jerseys. Those like jerseys those are nice. Very nice. nice. Go O. Go with your O as well. Just mm-hmm. fucking swing it back. Oh, Randy Moss Viking purple. That was that dark purple before they went to this like lighter when they went to the, the like like the outside. Like it's just not as good. When Randy Moss was getting touchdown thrown from Dante Culpepper and Dante Culpepper was doing the whole bump 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 bump. bump. That was that dark purple and that dark purple helmet with that fucking stripe on the side. Love it. Can't beat it. Hell yeah, Maximus <clears throat> animal. So I went with the Patriots. I'm a big throwback guy, as you can tell already. The uh, the, 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 the red throwbacks with the the white helmet where they got the old logo on it with the guy, one. the I Patriot wanted, yeah. guy holding it's one, it's one so of my with the, with the yeah. It's one of the best logos, even though I hate the Patriots, but it's such a good I logo. Love the Patriots. <laughs> such <laughs> such a good logo. The red, the white, the blue. It's very American. I just love everything about it. They're just everything there. You know what's not red, American? white, and blue. You know what's not American? It's not American. Fucking creamsicle colored jerseys. <laughs> but they're nice. They're nice. It's they're fun, beautiful. Uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The 1980s creamsicle jerseys. They're creamsicles are so good. I hate creamsicles. They're really? Like, oh, dude, man. That's, orange flavored things are like fucking absurd. Back in Volano, I would jerseys. get them all the time. I would get lunch money for that. I mean, it makes sense. I love the cream. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> the ice cream and I the got jerseys. red hair. I get. I don't it. really have like good analysis on it, other than I, I, I like the color as a jersey, it's and it's also, just very different. It's voted one of the ugliest jerseys of all time uh-huh. on like multiple lists. That's how you know the public's always wrong. Yeah, so exactly. Got to be one of the. You motherfucker. Want to be the goat? <laughs> so that's my O. I'm gonna wrap it wrap right back around with the A. St. Louis Rams. They are from 1973 to 1999. Goddamn! Goddamn! They're Again, like a blue. They to the gold. They're like a navy blue. Maybe a little different than navy, but the they're like bright league. yellow with the yellow stripes on the shoulder pads, and they got the Rams fucking horns going down the helmet. Kurt Warner, greatest show on turf. It's just a it's just a beautiful thing right there. That's my A. It's a good A. That is a good A. Fucking I a. went with a uh, one of the newer jerseys here, the um Pittsburgh Steelers color rush. I like those. Yeah. The, the all they're black, hard. 
with the yellow outline, the yellow stripe on the pants. Those actually low key might be like Dude, they're, one of my favorites. They're my favorite, probably my favorites. I think it's my even third favorite color. Rush, there's, yeah. They're based off of one of their older throwbacks with the yellow helmet, which is even with the the yellow helmet looks sick. But these ones, the all black, you just can't go wrong. They just and the, the picture I have here is James Harrison, who looks like a fucking animal in it. Yeah. So did you see that video of him fucking doing that that five hundred pound bench, bench press? Bench? Yeah, he's psychotic, dude. Freak. I saw like the memes like, what if this guy slaps your girlfriend's ass? Like, <laughs> you don't do anything. That's it. Please. <laughs> again. He slapped it. Do it so again. James? <laughs> Please. Do it again. <laughs> Please. Well, my next one is classic. It's. Their uniforms to this day, but it's a it's a gold mine NFL franchise, and they're back, and it's the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> so fucking stupid. What are you talking about? How I'm stupid? That Raider black with the fucking with the metallic silver, it's gorgeous. There's no way you could beat it. Remember when Jerry Rice rocked it? Second greatest football player of all time. Who's that? He was the wide receiver for San Francisco. Joe Montana used to throw him touchdown passes. Oh, yeah. He's the guy behind Julio and everything, right? Hmm. Uh, I mean, yeah. Julio was part of that Falcons team that was up. Okay, we're going to move on to the, to the tease. Lost. Is that your last one? Or you got another you got fucking tea. bullshit? No, I got, I got, oh, you want me to wrap it up? So then, yeah, I'll go with my teal. Yeah, I want you to fucking wrap it up. Okay, well, I'm going Panther teal. Teal for teal? Teal for T? Yep, that's exactly how I did it, Max. You're a good man. You know the rules. Uh, Panther teal's nice. Somebody teach snack rules. If I if I wore teal, it would bring out my eyes a little bit more. So I root for that. I don't root for the Panthers. Not a Panther fan. Hate the Panthers. Hate Cam Newton. Hate a lot of people on the Panthers. But I love those jerseys. All right, yeah. My T is another. That's not teal. I don't know if it's a baby blue or a teal, but the, the Houston Oilers. No, it's baby blue. Is it baby blue? That's baby blue. Yeah, I guess it's baby blue. The Houston we'll Oilers baby, baby blue. All right, that's baby blue. Yeah, so the Houston Oilers baby blue, the picture I have is the one with Warren Moon with the white helmets. Good, they quarter, have, good quarterback. Yeah, good quarterback. I like the ones with the white helmets because they have the white helmets and white pants. The ones before that, I believe in the 60s, were silver pants and like a, the baby blue helmet. doesn't look quite as nice, but the uh, yeah, it's another <clears> one. It's red, white, and blue. They look awesome. And they also have the Eiffel Tower you won't, on their You helmet. won't see those. Yeah, you're not going to see them anymore. Houston Oilers are gone. You're not going to see those jerseys anymore. So anytime I get to talk about them, see them. Time out. Time out. I, I'm at, no, I, I agree. I love – we were talking about it today when we were like, who do we want to do? I love the Oilers jersey. Mm-hmm. I am a big fan of the Titans jerseys. Yeah? I'm a big fan. I love that tee that goes like that. Yeah, I actually do like that. Like too. the baby blue. I'm their a big logo fan. is cool. They have like, like the their, baby blue, like the white, and then they have the dark blue. I think they have good jersey yeah, combinations. Something about their stripes and everything. I just don't like the way it as works. As long as Marcus Mariota's their quarterback, they won't win anything. So it's like, At least they got might as well look good. Out of it, yeah. yeah. Speaking of baby blue, we got the Chargers powder blue mm. classics. The greatest the greatest jersey of all time. It's got to be, right? It's. Yeah. I, I wish listen, I was a Chargers fan just so I could rock one. I wish you weren't the leader of this because I would have picked that number one. So, <laughs> I'll never pay. laughing lizard emoji. It pays, to be, <laughs> it pays to be the king, baby. Yeah, so just the Chargers, powder blue. They're just a thing of beauty. I think when I think of best NFL jerseys of all time, like, you know, a lot of jerseys pop in your mind, but that one's a mainstay. That's, it, it, that's it. Yeah. You that's like the one that comes think to your mind. Of that you also think of so far LT out. wearing it, running around, scoring touchdowns. So it's, you know, yeah. when you have an iconic player like that, I'm yeah, sure it helps. And it's, it's at who? LT. Danian Tomlinson, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, Can't I was gonna say LT. there's only one LT for you. I LT forgot. for me, for everybody. If anybody oh. thinks LT is Ladanian Thompson, I swear on my fucking life. A lot of people call him that. Well, then they're idiots. However, San Diego Chargers have a really good color rush too. Yeah, they do. They, yeah, have, like, like they nice might have the best they have color. Very rush. nice yeah. uniform, just in general. Giants yeah. color rush is nice too. Yeah, actually, just, I think all our teams have pretty sweet color yeah, rushes. Yeah, they do. Yeah, All right, I like well, the color. Right? Listen, we got to wrap this up because we're at the 29 minute mark and this shit's probably about to shut off. I don't know if the camera's already shut off, so we're going to say our terms and conditions apply. <laughs> okay, well, for real, make sure that if you want in on the Fade the Public Dynasty League, you head over to gofundme.com slash big dogs draft. It'll be linked down below. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new and we will see y'all on next week's Fade the Public episode. Peace. <laughs>